The Bible shares with us characteristics of God. One of the most comforting attribute of God is that God never sleeps nor slumber. There's something so comforting and reassuring about trusting the same God who has come through for many others before us. His mercy and faithfulness is soul-lifting as it elicits courage to face every challenge. Great confidence springs inside us as we learn to trust the God who never sleeps nor slumbers. However, this rest only comes as we study His Word and read through history to see His amazing faithfulness. Our inner eyes will become fully open to see that God never changes. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 through 8, AMP says, Remember your leaders, for it was they who brought you the word of God, and consider the result of their conduct, the outcome of their godly lives, and imitate their faith, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider of eternal salvation through Christ, and imitate their reliance on God with absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. Jesus Christ is eternally changeless, always the same yesterday, and today, and forever. As we grow in understanding, our eyes will always be on Him, and our trust in Him will become firm and concrete as we get to the point where it is hard to doubt His ability to come through for us. Psalms chapter 121, verse 1 through 8, AMP says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills of Jerusalem. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber briefly nor sleep soundly. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guard your doing out and your coming in everything that you do from this time forth and forever. Trusting the systems of this world is sure to disappoint us constantly because they will keep failing. We cannot even trust leaders because one day they have the power to help us, while the next they are so helpless as power changes hands. See what David said in Psalms chapter 120, verse 1, AMP. In my trouble I cried to the Lord, and He answered me. Even when it looks like God isn't aware of our mess, we must keep trusting Him because we cannot confirm His presence by feelings. Faith, hope, and trust are the only genuine ways to ascertain that God is involved in what concerns us because He has declared that faith brings His outstretched hand on the scene. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? David was a man who understood this nature of God, so he wrote Psalms chapter 27, verse 1 through 14, AMP, out of his experiences with God. Psalms chapter 27, verse 1 through 14, AMP says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the refuge and fortress of my life. Whom shall I dread? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, even in this I am confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in His presence all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty, the delightful loveliness, and majestic grandeur of the Lord, and to meditate in His temple. For in the day of trouble He will hide me in His shelter, in the secret place of His tent He will hide me, He will lift me up on a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me, in His tent I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious and compassionate to me and answer me. When you said, seek my face in prayer, require my presence as your greatest need, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I will seek on the authority of your word. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me, nor leave me, O God of my salvation. Although my father and my mother have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up, adopt me as his child. Teach me your way, O Lord, 
and lead me on a level path because of my enemies who lie in wait. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have come against me. They breathe out violence. I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. We must not allow anything to deter us from maintaining our confidence and trust. We must be certain that as God will continue to watch over us, shielding and keeping us from evil. The testimony of the three Hebrew boys is faith-provoking because it shows us that even when all hell looks like it is breaking loose, our firm trust in God will bring victory at the end. The actions of Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego illustrate another type of kingdom response, a complete trust in God. This story involves deliberate personal resistance to a government decree that violates God's standards. The king set up a statue with the intent of consolidating his power, gathering all the classes of his officials to a great ceremony. The gold statue that Nebuchadnezzar ordered to be built must have been awe-inspiring. It was 90 feet high. These rulers were to attend the dedication of the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up and to fall face down in worship of it, chapter 3, verse 5. Anyone who rejected this command would do so on pain of death by being thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Nebuchadnezzar intended to establish himself as the supreme religious authority in Babylon as well as the undisputed political ruler, so everyone did as told, or at least almost everyone. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were among the officials present for this huge gathering, a confrontation was unavoidable. When all the people who were gathered bowed down, these three men did not. But, like children in church looking around during prayer time to see whose eyes are open, some Chaldeans saw the three Hebrew boys standing tall among all those who'd protested themselves and ran to Nebuchadnezzar to tattle. Jealousy drips from their accusation against the three Jews who had attained high positions despite their status as captives. These petty court officials saw their chance to destroy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because their faith forbade them to worship any god but the true god of Israel, and they didn't miss it. Nebuchadnezzar flew into a furious rage at the report. It's surprising that he gave the accused an opportunity to answer the charges against them. That he did may indicate the esteem he had for them. But make no mistake, the king would only accept one response, complete capitulation. They'd worship the giant idol of gold or be burned alive. Despite his previous praise of the Hebrew god, Nebuchadnezzar added, Who is the god who can rescue you from my power? As before, the king's question would eventually be answered. These courageous Jewish men refused the king's direct order and placed themselves in God's hands. Their answer is impressive. If the god we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you, as king, to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue. In other words, they declared, we'll fear our god rather than your furnace any day. But even if he sovereignly decides to let us burn, we'll still serve the living god rather than bow to your dead idol. Priceless! They preferred death over unfaithfulness to god and had no doubt prepared themselves for the possibility of this day far in advance. Truly, God neither sleeps nor slumber when we cry out in faith. Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were so confident as they replied the king, not even minding the consequences that would follow their stand for the truth. The truth is life will always present us with opportunities to show us where we actually stand with God, and in their case, the answer they gave the king was the proof of their faith in their living God. It's difficult to imagine Nebuchadnezzar's level of rage when his authority was challenged, but his face was clearly enraged. To match his rage, he directed that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. The radiant heat was so intense that the men carrying Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were killed when they were thrown into the flames. The faithful Hebrews, no doubt dressed in flammable clothing, had no hope unless hope itself intervened. Nebuchadnezzar was astounded to see that not only were the men walking around in the fire unharmed, but that there were four of them. The fourth appeared to be a god's son, implying that he was either the pre-incarnate Christ or an angel. 
When the king realized that the men he had sentenced had been divinely rescued, he summoned them, and not a hair on their heads was singed. Being thrown into Nebuchadnezzar's deadly fire had proven to be a piece of cake. Praise be to the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, exclaimed the king. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who had faith in him. Believers today should remember these young men's actions and the glory God received as a result. They disobeyed the king's command and put their lives in danger rather than serve or worship any god other than their own. Are you willing to do the same? Events will always happen that will compel us to take a stand for God. However, the choice is always ours to make. If we trust him enough, knowing that he never sleeps nor slumbers, he will come through for us. But if choose fear, then we have chosen the devil's control. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 33 AMP illustrates this point. It says, Immediately, he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he sent the crowds away. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat, by this time, was already a long distance from land, tossed and battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, 3 to 6 a.m., Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter replied to him, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus extended his hand and caught him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those in the boat worshipped him with awe-inspired reverence, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Peter had a choice when he saw the wind to either take a stand with Jesus and continue to walk on water or bow to the fear around him. He chose fear as he looked at the wind and sank until Jesus intervened and rescued him. All the while, Jesus stood there watching to see Peter's decision on whether to come to look at him and come over or listen to the boisterous winds. The great thing is, he started by believing Jesus when he stepped out of the boat onto the water, then later switched to the reality of his challenge and predicament. We can't experience God's supernatural ability if we choose fear, but when we decide that God, who never sleeps or slumbers, is for us, then we will see so many wonders. Adults should sleep for seven or more hours per night, according to research. Seven uninterrupted hours of sleep is now a pipe dream for parents of newborns, infants, and toddlers. But the God who keeps you will not fall asleep at 10 p.m. while watching the latest Netflix show or scrolling through notifications on a smartphone. He doesn't need the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep to recharge for the next day. No, he is available every minute of every day for the rest of our lives and beyond. According to the prophet Isaiah, those who wait on the Lord will find renewed strength, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Only God can give us the strength to parent another day. Our mortal strength supply is not an eternal reservoir like the Almighty's. We require rest for both our bodies and minds, but he does not faint or grow weary, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 38. And if we go to the Lord and ask for rest, he has promised it. For he gives sleep to his beloved, he says in his word, Psalm chapter 127, verse 2. God is constantly awake for our sake. Let us pray. My Lord and my King, thank you for your grace that knows no limits. Thank you for the grace to trust you no matter what is falling apart around me. I am grateful for your word that builds for marvelous acts in me. In the name of Jesus, I decide to keep holding on to the truth that you will never sleep, slumber, or forget me, rather, you are cheering me on unto victory. Amen.